More people tied to President Trump's 2016 campaign are lawyering up this weekend. Let's take a look. These are all of the people we know of so far who have hired an attorney. The latest, Vice President Mike Pence, campaign communications advisor Michael Caputo, and Trump's personal attorney during the campaign, Michael Cohen. All of them have lawyers now, and we've also learned President Trump has hired a second high-profile attorney to represent him. Let's discuss with CNN political reporter Eugene Scott and the associate dean of Yale Law School and a former FBI special agent, Asha Rangappa. Guys, thanks for being with us. So, thanks. Eugene, who hasn't hired a lawyer right. yet from the Trump camp? <laughs> right. I was looking at that list and saw more faces than I remembered the last time I checked. What I would probably tell people is that it's possible that there are people in the administration who've hired lawyers that we don't know about yet, or at least are getting legal counsel. But from what we've seen in talking to other people familiar with investigations, it would be wise for people to get as much counsel as early as possible. And Asha, I mean, what would be the reason behind each of these people having their own attorneys? Well, they need someone to represent their own interests. And it's important to understand here that they are differently situated than the president of the United States. The president has certain immunities and privileges that attach to his office. For example, he probably can't be indicted while he's sitting as president. So you don't think so? <laughs> there, I mean, that's the that's general, typical. That's, I think that's the general thing. consensus among legal scholars, and it is DOJ policy. But all these other people are fully exposed to criminal liability, and even if they haven't done anything wrong, when the FBI comes knocking... Lying to a federal agent is a felony offense that carries a penalty of five years in prison. So they can mess up pretty badly just in the course of answering questions. They need someone there to really advise them on every step uh, that takes place as, as this investigation gets wider. So all that makes sense to you. Guys, let's take a look at this tweet that President Trump put out this week where he says, I'm being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director. Witch hunt. So, Eugene, do we know what the president is basing this on? Because he seems to be confirming in that tweet that he himself is under investigation. So when I saw that tweet, that's the first thing I thought as well, that it was confirmation. But uh, CNN Politics spoke with a person familiar with Trump's tweet and said that the president was simply responding to reports that CNN and The Washington Post have put out saying that he was under investigation, but that he himself has not yet been contacted by a special counsel, uh, letting him know that that's what's actually happening. Regardless of what it confirms, we know he's upset and that he's going to keep talking about it, despite being advised by his attorneys that he probably should not. Is there any benefit, Asha, to him putting out those tweets, to making these these public statements and and even going after his own his own team when he's saying, you know, he's, it implies it implies that he's talking about Rosenstein here? Sure. There is zero benefit to him here. And I think any lawyer would agree that he should not be speaking now. Remember, FBI investigations go in several stages. So typically there's two phases. One is a preliminary investigation. When there's an allegation, they just have to look and see if there's something there. Then if they find a reasonable factual basis, they will open up a full investigation. And then they can use all the investigative tools at their disposal. So he doesn't want to be making the case for them in this stage to keep you know, their investigation exactly, growing exactly um you know they they are under an obligation to look into any allegations but if they don't find anything then maybe it would even stop mm -hmm. there but he's really not helping himself he's we're just about out of time but i do want to ask because we just heard from congresswoman marcia blackburn that you know again there has been no proof yet that there has had a collusion on behalf of the Trump associates with the Russians in this ongoing investigation. Is it too soon to expect answers or is there something to it here that we keep hearing from supporters of President Trump? Sure. I think it's too soon to know right now. I mean, federal investigations will take Right. years. And I, this is a very unusual case because you're dealing with a counterintelligence investigation and potential criminal activity that's coming out of it. So there's all kinds of issues about protecting methods and sources, investigating the counterintelligence side, mm -hmm. also looking into the criminal activity that might include complex financial transactions. This, I don't think, will be something that's concluded anytime soon. Right. I also think it's important to say that just because something has not been made public doesn't mean a conclusion Absolutely. hasn't been made. A lot of times people say no one knows anything we may not know anything. That doesn't mean the intelligence agents investigating don't know anything. Both of you, thank you so much for weighing in. Thanks so I much. appreciate it.